Welcome to another episode of our Unreal Engine 5 FPS series. In this video, I'll show you how to create a blueprint for your weapon and how to add a simple inventory to the character that will spawn it. To be honest, I meant to do this in the last video, but I totally forgot. I got a little bit too excited with the animation, so we'll just do it in this one. Now, let's just do it. Uh, to start, I'm going to go to the core folder and inside of the core folder, I'm going to find the BP character. This is where we currently have our SK assault rifle. This is not a blueprint. We are not spawning it. It is currently just a skeletal mesh component that is attached to the character. Now, this is not a problem with how we've set things up now because we don't really have more weapons, but if you did have more weapons, it would be more convenient to have it in blueprints. Another interesting thing is that if we had a blueprint, we would be able to kind of modify its settings and place it around the map a little more easier than we do right now. So let's just do that first this is gonna this is gonna kill you i know uh just delete it <laughs> just delete the weapon that's the first thing we're gonna do it's gonna look really sad right now we don't have a weapon anymore um let's try to not think about that go to the content drawer go to core and inside of core i'm gonna right click find blueprint class and create an actor now as it says right here an actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world the weapons don't need to be a character or anything of that sort so just make it an actor We'll call this blueprint BP weapon. Inside a BP weapon, all we're going to do is, again, I'm going to go to the content drawer. I'm going to find the assault rifle again and whew, just drag it in, man. Just oh, we have it. All right. It is in. Great. Um, you can compile that and we don't need to do anything else inside of here for now. We will eventually, but for now, you can kind of just forget about this. Now, let's go back to BP character. We don't have the weapon in here there's a few ways we can get in here we could use a they're called child actor components i believe um this just kind of allows you to pretty much place a blueprint inside of here so if i just searched for weapon and then parented it to the ik handgun and reset the values it would do the exact same thing but it would actually give us the blueprint instead of just the skeletal mesh so if i added a cube for example for whatever reason you wanted a cube in here Oh my bad, just add a cube. I can't type cube, boys. I cannot type cube. All right, cube. So if I added a cube and then compiled and then went to the character and compiled, and yeah, you should see a cube. Now, this isn't the great way to do it either because we are still locked to this child actor component, uh, meaning at runtime, we can't really decide what weapons we want to spawn. We can't spawn more than one. It's a little bit inconvenient. So let's not really use that. I'm going to delete that too. Also, Please delete the cube. We don't need the cube. There's no need for the cube. Let's recompile everything. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spawn it whenever the game begins. And you're not going to be able to see that in the game. So it's just going to... The first thing you're going to see is just the weapon being visible. This blueprint is a mess, by the way. We should make a, we should make a cleaning tutorial one of, these, uh, one of these next few tutorials. But anyway, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a begin play event. I don't think we have one. Oh, we do have one. So go to the event graph, event begin play. Oh, because we're using it to add the mapping context. That's great. So this is, again, an event that runs whenever the game starts. The first thing we're doing is we're just adding our input mapping context, which we use to set up all the inputs. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spawn this blueprint and attach it just at runtime. So how do we do that? Well... There is a, if we right click, let's just search for it, spawn. Oh, the first thing that pops up, spawn actor from class. Let's try that. It asks us for class. So our class is our blueprint class, so weapon. And then it's going to ask us for a transform and a few other things that we don't really need at the moment. But we do need the transform. So where are you going to parent it? Well, for now, let's just start by it not parenting it to anything so if you split the if you split the pin by right clicking and split structure pin it'll just decide that the transform is made up of zero zero location zero rotation and just one scale so if we compile that now obviously you're not going to see any weapons in the player's hands because we are again spawning it somewhere random but if we eject and search our hierarchy inside there there is a weapon and it is right here which is at zero now let's parent it. Let's just attach it to whatever we were attaching it, which was the character arms. So I'm going to drag that. 
and this is the weapon so the spawn actor node gives us a reference to the weapon the constructed object i can just really just drag from here and say attach um and then search for one of these attach functions attach actor to actor attach actor to component now our character arms are a component a skeletal mesh component so we're going to actually go for attach actor to component that's already going to plug the target which is going to be our weapon and then we need the parent which in this case is the arms make sure to also set up the socket name this is exactly what we were doing before when we were assigning the socket here the parent socket to be ik handgun we were assigning this one just to make sure ik handgun so we're going to do the same thing here ik and gun make sure you use the underscores it needs to be exactly the same name and then it's going to have a bunch of rules how to handle translation rotation and scale when attaching now if we type keep relative that's going to keep the weapon's current position so if, for example if i compile now um that i mean actually yeah i think we're totally fine because we we zeroed it all out so uh, relative is just going to be zero all right well we can use that I was about to suggest, generally, the way I do this is I type snap to target, which will just make sure that it resets both the location and the rotation. But in this instance, since we already set it to zero by default, we are technically just fine. So, which is great. Now, that spawns our weapon. Now, I do want to make sure that we add a, some sort of list or, or, or something that allows us to determine kind of what weapons we want to spawn for now we only have one i am aware of that but i think it would be interesting to allow the character to hold more than one and to only have one visible at a time we're not going to do much else other than that in this tutorial so no equipping and unequipping and animations for that at the moment but let's at least do that so how, how do we do that well let's uh i am so excited about this <laughs> let's go to variables and inside of variables we're going to need a list or an array, as we call them in Unreal Engine, um, of these blueprint weapon types. We only have one, but let's say, oh, I did something weird. <laughs> if I press Control B and I go to the weapon and I right click, I can create a child blueprint class and call this one Assault Rifle. And then this is also a type of weapon so now i could make as many as i wanted if i wanted to make another assault rifle it has some sort of again cube um i really don't have a lot of ideas today boys uh but let's just go with it if i wanted to add a cube and just kind of have it like this i don't know maybe add two just make it like that um and compile this would be two different types of assault rifles right here so two different types of weapons they are both parented to the weapon class so we could spawn both of these and equip them on the character. So let's do that let's to, to kind of make it easier. Uh, but by the way, you could also just pick them from here. So if I <laughs> search for Assault Rifle 1, right now there's no restriction on that. So if I search for Assault Rifle 1, I'm going to have this monstrosity of cubes. Let's not do that. Control Z. Anyway, let's... um. First, I'm going to right click on this and promote it to a variable. And I'm just going to say this is our inventory. Right now, this if I compile, this is only going to allow us to pick one type of thing to spawn. So that's not what we want. What we do want, and I'm going to unselect it from there for a moment. What we do want is I'm going to want to go to this right here to its details panel to the variable. And then right here, it says make this variable a container, array set or map. Inside of that, I'm going to click on array and click on change variable type. Now let Unreal Engine load for a moment. And then once you come back, if you compile, oh well, compile again, it's going to give us a zero ray element and add a little drop down here that says at element. Now we can add as many of these as we want. So if I go here and type assault rifle one and then assault rifle two, by the way, the reason I made two blueprints is so that if we add any functionality to this one, both this assault rifle one and the assault rifle are going to get that functionality which is great in case we want to customize anything per um, weapon. So I'm going to add both of those here. And now we're going to need to figure out how to spawn both of them and hide one of them. How do we do that? Because now we have an array. I can't plug this into the class. Ah, um, well, it turns out you could get, you could 
just type get, and that would give you the element at the zero index of this array. So index zero is just going to be the assault rifle right here. You can just see it in the inventory. That would just give us the first one. So if I plug that into there and then compile, that is just going to spawn the assault rifle. And if I go back and I type one, which is this one, it's going to be the cube monstrosity. It's going to give us a weird uh, weapon, but we want both of them to spawn. So let's do that. So instead of this get, let's remove the get. We're going to use a for each loop. What this is going to do is it's going to go through each item of this inventory and it's going to run this right here, which is great because we want to run all this code, just spawn and attach for both of the items. We just also won't going to want to hide them and then only make the one we want visible. But let's just start with this. So if I drag this into here and we run the for loop and then for each one of the items we spawn it actually very conveniently we get the class this is exactly the class of the item we're going through in the loop so we're gonna do it's gonna go zero this is gonna be equal to this one and then we're gonna pass that to that it's gonna spawn it it's gonna attach it and then this is gonna run again and array element is gonna be one or this one and then it's gonna spawn it and attach it so if I compile now you can see that we only see the monstrosity. I am aware of that. But if you click on, on what we're looking at, you're going to see that we have two assault rifles here. It just so happens that you're only looking at the cubes because they're both placed on top of each other. So let's hide whichever one we don't want. Or actually, let's hide both of them and then only make the one we want visible. How do we do that? Well... As always, we're just going to take the reference to the weapon we have. So in this case, it's going to be this again, the constructed object. And I'm going to just type visible or well, this works set actor hidden in game. OK, let's try to use that. Let's drag it here. Boom, hit that right there. New hidden, whether or not to hide the actor in all of its components. Yes, we do want to hide it. Compile. Okay, great. Now both of them are hidden. Now we still need to make one of them visible. How do we make one of them visible? Because this code runs for both of them. Well, to do that, we're first going to need to store them in an array just like this one. The only difference is that we're going to store it kind of separately. And also this array is of a type of class, not a type of blueprint. So it references some sort of, it references the type of a blueprint, not the actual blueprint. So instead of this, I'm going to right click on this value, promote to variable. That's going to give us an, a variable of type actor. I'm going to call this, actually, I should have probably called this inventory, but let's just call this equipped, equipped weapons. And we're going to again, go here, click on array. That's going to give us an issue because we're setting one item to an array. That makes no sense. So I'm going to unconnect that. And now. Whenever we, and this is a bit messy, whenever we, whenever we spawn an actor, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our array and add, add it to this array. So we're going to keep track of it in this list or array. So just make sure you plug that in, plug that into there. Okay. So now every time we spawn a weapon, we also add it to this equipped weapons array. So this is basically going to be filled with all the references of the weapons we spawned, which in this case is just going to be references to actual spawn blueprints of these types. That's great, because now when we complete this entire array, I can take my equipped weapons and just like we did before with the get, I can get a copy and then get the first item in this array and just make it visible by just reversing whatever we did before. So if I take set actor hidden in game and I just copy that and paste it here, I can pass it this reference and reverse the value. So new hidden is going to be false. So it's not going to be hidden. And then I just do that whenever completed. Ooh, that was, that was a bit complicated. All right. Now just Go to the level and play, and now you can see that we have the first item. We have both items spawned. So keep in mind that this one, this weird thing is the cube monstrosity, and then this one is the normal one. But this one is hidden. In fact, you can see right here that it says actor hidden in game, and if I unset this, you can see it. So that's perfect. We are now making the first item visible. We can't really tweak 
or we can't really change which one is visible from anywhere other than the code though, which is a bit inconvenient. So let's make a variable for this, like which index we're gonna make visible. So I'm gonna right click, promote a variable, and I'm gonna say equipped index or equipped weapon index. And then compile that. Now in class defaults, if we search for default, you're going to see that there is an equipped weapon index value. And if I set this to one, for example, and compile, I now have the weird cube monstrosity. Um, you're also going to be able to see it here somewhere. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to scroll down for a while though. But the point is that now, if you just go to the character, you can very easily edit the equipped weapon index. I'm going to set that back to zero though, because we really don't want that monstrosity. And yep. That's basically it. That was the entire tutorial. I just wanted to show you how to quickly learn how to spawn some, some items. One thing that you may have as an issue though, just to bear this in mind, if you've done the weird cube monstrosity, you might have issues with the character's movement by default. Mostly because just this is just important before I end the tutorial, because these have collision, these cubes, so the character will collide with them. So just just don't add cubes is basically the or the answer to this. Just don't 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 do it. You'll be fine. And, and also make sure the assault rifle itself doesn't have collision either. You can go to its details panel and under collision, make sure it's set to no collision. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Um, we have a lot more interesting stuff and we'll be back to the animation stuff in that one. So I'll see you.